If you're watching this video, you're probably shooting on photography lenses and you're wondering if it's worth it to make the jump over to cinema lenses. And the answer to that is really dependent on what you shoot and how you shoot the things that you shoot. So here are the main differences. Cinema lenses are designed specifically for shooting well, video and photography lenses are designed for taking still photos, but it doesn't mean you can't use one for the other. The overarching theme that you'll notice with cinema lenses is that it gives the filmmaker total control over the equipment, which at the highest level is extremely important. Cinema lenses are usually big chonkers, they're heavy, they're large, but they are more durable than photography lenses. The solid metal housing on cinema lenses allow them to withstand harsher environments and rougher handling. And that's why rental houses can rent out the same set of cinema lenses over five, 10, 15, even 20 years of repeated usage without any major issues. They have gear teeth on the focus, aperture, and sometimes the zoom rings to attach follow focus systems or motors for smooth and precise control. Cinema lenses also have marked markings on both sides of the lens barrel that indicate the focus distance, the aperture settings, and also the focal length if it's a zoom lens. These markings are useful for cinematographers who work with assistants or operators who need to see the lens settings from different angles and also to get the exact settings each time that they change a camera setup. Now on photography lenses, you'll usually find a proprietary lens mount, such as Canon with their EF mount or Sony with their E mount, which means that if you wanted to mount that same Canon lens on a Sony body, you will need an adapter for it. However, for cinema lenses, the same lens can have a variety of different mounts, such as PL, EF, or E mount. For some cinema lenses, even after you buy it, you can actually swap out the different mount, so you don't have to be stuck to a certain mount. You can use different cameras with that same exact lens. Now, because cinema lenses are heavier and they require other team members to help you fully realize the potential of a cinema lens, it can be harder for running gun situations where you don't have that full team or you're just solo operating. For example, I've tried using anamorphic lenses, which are fully manual lenses on a wedding shoot and that was mounted on a gimbal and I had to manually pull focus. It wasn't like the best time for me. Uh, I made it work, but it was definitely a challenge without having like a first AC helping me pull focus. It's not impossible, but it's just harder. Okay, so just to give you an idea of like the focus throw on a cinema lens, this is set to close distance right now. And if I turn all the way to infinity, that's how far I would have to turn. But using a photo lens, this is infinity, this is close. Infinity, close. Cinema lens, infinity, close. Infinity, close. So in the cinema lenses, there's a lot more focus throw. You have to turn the focus wheel ring a lot farther than you would on a photo lens. But having that longer focus throw gives you more control and accuracy over your focus adjustments, which is essential for shooting video where you might need to rack focus from one subject to another or following a moving object. Also, cinema lenses don't have autofocus, which means that if you're doing run and gun stuff or like a talking head, like a simple talking head like this, that means you need someone to help you operate as your head is moving like in and out of the frame. And again, the control that Cinema Lenses offers you where you can set where the focus is, where your viewer is looking, can be impactful for your story. Cinema Lenses also have a consistent focus throughout the zoom range, meaning that they don't change their focus distance when you zoom in or out. This is called par focal design and it allows you to maintain your focus without having to refocus every time that you change your framing or change your zoom. But this also means that it's not the easiest time if you're using your bare hands to manually focus the lens. You would definitely want to have something like a follow focus or even an electronic follow focus motor. And again, for run and gun situations, it's not impossible to shoot on cinema lenses, but it will be quite a bit of a struggle. Versus on photography lenses, you can adjust by hand. It's not as hard to do it by hand because the focus throw isn't as large. The focus throw on photo lenses allow you the speed and also the convenience of not having to attach a follow focus to the lens, which are useful for run and gun shoots where things are changing and moving really quickly. Cinema lenses indicate the amount of light entering the lens by using T-stops. T-stops are different from F-stops in that they account for the light loss caused by the lens elements and coatings. T-stops are more accurate and consistent than F-stops when measuring light transmissions through different lenses and focal lengths. And you'll notice that as I turn the aperture ring, it's a smooth transition from stop to stop. This is called a declicked aperture ring. On photo lenses, as you're changing the aperture, you'll probably notice the jumps from stop to stop. And for video, if you're doing an aperture rack, this will be super distracting. Now, you might ask, 
I've never seen an aperture rack before. Why would you ever need to do an aperture rack? And to that, I am going to play a really quick clip from Succession on HBO. <sighs> Did you notice it? I'll play it again. Notice how before the camera goes inside the building, it's completely dark. But once we enter, you can immediately see what's inside. And that subtle change in exposure is called an aperture rack. And that is why at the highest level of filmmaking, they use cinema lenses, or at least lenses with a de-clicked aperture. Cinema lenses are designed to deliver consistent images throughout different focal lengths, apertures, zooms, and cameras. They have minimal distortion, vignetting, chromatic aberration, breathing, or other optical flaws that you might or might not like in your images. They also have matching image characteristics, such as color and sharpness within a given set or series of lenses. Now, while photography lenses are great, they are designed to deliver optimal image quality at specific focal lengths, apertures, zooms, and cameras. And overall, the image quality is not the most consistent throughout different focal lengths, throughout different series or sets of lenses. Now the last big difference between cinema and photo lenses is their price. Cinema lenses are generally like two, three, four times more expensive than photo lenses, which is like, you know, quite a hefty investment. And at the highest level of filmmaking, you are spending that money for that consistency, that reliability, and also that control over your image. And photo lenses, on the other hand, are way cheaper than cinema lenses, which is why most of us actually start with photo lenses over a full-fledged cinema lens. There's absolutely nothing wrong with shooting on photo lenses when you're doing video, but as you go on bigger and bigger productions, you are going to want some of the features that you will find on cinema lenses, because now you're working with more people and more talented crew members, which gives you that control that you want over your image. So which type of lens do you actually need for your project? Well, that depends on your budget, your style, and the type of things that you shoot. If you need that precise control and consistency from your equipment, and you have one or more people that can help you operate, then you should invest in cinema lenses. But if you need something that is convenient because you're shooting weddings or you're shooting running gun stuff, the flexibility of photography lenses are just unmatched. And there's like a whole world of like cinematic photo lenses where you can put gear rings on photo lenses and have declicked apertures and you can like rehouse them and stuff like that. And that kind of gives you like the best of both worlds. So hopefully this video helps you decide whether or not you should buy a cinema lens or you should just stick with your photo lens. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more filmmaking content like this. Until the next one, my name is Alex Chung and I'll see you later. Bye.